Thank you for tuning in to the Inner Circle Podcast, premier podcast for all things Xbox. And we are here in Los Angeles for E3 2017. Today we chat with Aaron Greenberg, General Manager of First and Third Party Marketing for all games at Xbox. Thanks, Aaron, for giving us an opportunity to chat with you, man. Just grateful to have you back on the show once again. My pleasure. Listen, E3 was amazing. Okay, 42 games. Still should see no tweets <laughs> <laughs> from anybody for a few months, yeah. okay? Uh, 22 exclusive, whether timed or true exclusives, absolutely just an amazing show. Yeah. Blown away by, uh, you know, everything, the variety and the diversity of the games that were shown. Yeah. And uh, that trip to Japan played paid off. Yeah. And I made sure fans knew that. I'm yeah. like, Cold Vein, Dragon Ball Z, yeah. Black Desert, holy yeah. smokes, man. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. So, so far, how has the reception, what, like, what type of feedback have you guys gotten for the X? I mean, it, a lot of people kind of were like down on the price because it was $4.99. I knew it was going to be $4.99. But what type of reception have you guys gotten? Well, it's been a great week. I mean, I, you know, for me, uh, this is special because we came to E3 16 years ago and, you know, Renegade, you know, Microsoft had this idea to go make a console and we showed up at E3 with the original Xbox at the time it was also the most powerful console. So to be able to come back 16 years later and fail the Xbox One X um, and bring something that delivers, you know, uh, by a pretty large margin, uh, more power than anything else exists today is really exciting. And as you said, said, hey, we know you've got the power, show us the games. Right. And we were, I think, uh, with 42 games, I think we were pretty relentless in the pace there, and that was fun to do as well. Um, and so it's been, you know, it's been great. The reaction's been really positive. Um, we're, uh, we're really, you know, you never know. A team does a lot of hard work to make these, these kinds of events come together. Many, many months of preparation, a lot of conversations with development teams, just, you know, a massive, massive amount of work. And, uh, and we put it all together, and then we ultimately wait to see what we think. And so the reaction's been great. I think on the price side, um, you know, for us, we were thinking, you know, hey, today, as a gamer, if I want to go experience true 4K gaming, most people are spending, you know, thousands of dollars in many cases, well over a thousand dollars to experience that. Um, and so for us to be able to bring true 4K gaming with, you know, the type of performance this box has to the console space uh, for only $4.99, I feel like it's really an incredible value. Um, and, but of course, we have to show the games that showcase that. Right. Uh, so I think things like Forza Motorsport 7, I think Metro is a great example, Assassin's Creed, Anthem, all titles that really are showcasing the benefits of having that extra power. Uh, it's, been, it's been exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I'm completely impressed, especially when we first saw Metro. We were like, holy smokes, you see this? This is the power of Xbox X. Yeah. So it, it was really impressive, absolutely. Now, one of the big things you guys showed off, which I had talked with, you know, big shout out to Mikey Guerrero, a whole entire year beforehand, was OG Xbox games <laughs> coming back to Xbox. Yeah, yeah. And you know, for me begging Phil forever to bring back a Kotar, I no longer have to beg him for another Kotar. So how did that come about, and how was the reception for that? Well, you're right. I mean. You and your your listeners and just our core fans uh, have reacted really well to Back and Pat. We have now over uh, nearly 400 titles available, uh, and it's been fun revealing you know Red Dead and you right. know COD Black Ops 2 and things like that, and then uh, and seeing just the usage jump on those titles, which is great. But people wanted more, and we do uh, have an incredible library of games that we can go harvest from with the original Xbox and. Whether you know folks like you and me that played those back in the day uh, and want to go back and play Crimson Skies or Fusion Frenzy or some of these other titles that we have fond memories of, or people that are new to Xbox but didn't you know want to add to their library, so it's exciting. I mean, I think to be able to say you can play three generations of games on one system uh, is pretty special, Huge. and uh, so we're excited. I mean, it was something the team wasn't sure they could do. Uh, these are always hard. You think about architecture, licensing. There's a lot of farther back you go, the harder it gets. Right. Um, but, uh, but the team, we have an incredible team uh, the, in that space, the back and pad team. Uh, and so adding this to that was a challenge they took on and they delivered for us at E3. And uh, yeah, I'd say Phil, myself, the rest of the team was had a lot of fun. We were, it was, we knew it was gonna be a fun moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, uh, cause I was sitting there on the fans, uh, with the fans on the floor when he announced it and uh, 
people just literally scream, thank you, Phil, and they were, you know, yeah, people yeah. like crazy. So <laughs> yeah. it's fun to have moments like that. You right. Know? And uh, we always try to deliver for our fans whenever we can. Right. So, uh, you know, listen, early on, uh, guys were very quiet with Xbox early on. We had some awesome games come out, original OG Xbox games being remastered. Um, I believe those were received pretty well. But for a while, it was kind of quiet. You guys did something that I think most people didn't expect, especially at a time where it seemed like Sony was grabbing up all its third-party deals. Suddenly, Microsoft has a few third-party deals of their own, uh, and what I mean by that is marketing deals. Sure. How did you guys snatch up games like Metro, Anthem, Assassin's Creed? You know, because these games really wowed me, especially Metro and Anthem, and I'm a huge Bioware fan. So knowing that you guys got that just had me ecstatic. I don't even care if it's not exclusive. This is a simple fact that you guys are working with Bioware, sure. and this thing it looks like it's going to be an amazing game. The environments of alone were just stunning. Yeah. I can't wait to get my hands on it. How did you guys work this thing? Well, we did a couple things. One was we really did deliberately say we want to have the largest, most diverse lineup because we know gamers don't just want to play one type of game all the time. They love the big blockbusters shooters and the racing games we have those and the RPGs but we want to celebrate games of all different kinds from all different types of creators at the same time we were pretty purposeful about curating <laughs> titles that we felt like would showcase the power of the X um, and what true 4k gaming can be Metro is a great example of that really I think an underappreciated yes. single-player game uh, before the big zombie boom you know right. uh, and to have that team uh, the 4A team coming back and uh, creating another new masterpiece and that, uh, you know, that's based on an incredible novel as well is really, really special. Um, you know, to, we've been working with uh, with Patrick and the team at EA um, on, uh, as they talked about, uh, taking Xbox One X and integrating it into the Frostbite engine and all the benefits of that. I mean, they showed Madden running in 4K as an example of that. Uh, I haven't seen the NFL in 4K before. Right, right. It doesn't right. exist. Right. But it does now on Xbox One X, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm super pumped about that. Right. And then, of right. course, uh, Anthem is just another example of, like, the people are creating new. And they want to do that and showcase that um, using the most powerful console ever made. And so, when you give people more tools, more power, you unlock uh, more potential, more creativity. And so, that was kind of the idea there. And it's just fun to, even just in the early days, start doing that. But trust me, as the time goes on, you're going to see more devs, more people that have more time with the dev kits, showing more and more things that I think our fans can be really excited about. Now, IDEA Xbox, you guys got some stunning endings coming. And one of the games that we are really impressed with was The Last Night. Yeah. I don't know what this developer did to make this game so amazing. Real water. You see it hitting the screen, yeah. the, the river, yeah. and then everything else is all pixelated. Yeah. It's just such an awesome game, and I yeah. think about that. How did, you know, like, just alone, did you guys really specifically go out and try to find the most unique indie games you possibly can get on the Xbox this time around? Yeah, I mean, we have a team, uh, you know, that, by the way, led by our leadership in film, we have a team, but it's all gamers. And we all love different types of games, we have a team that on works with those developers and goes through all the different concepts and projects. So that's a great example, sure, of I mean, the throwback to kind of Blade Runner style. Uh, I think something really unique there, two guys making that making that game. But at the same time, we've got things like Artful Escape that, you know, I think it celebrates the opportunity around, I think, indie games and the whole ID at Xbox program mm -hmm. uh, and just the variety of type of games you get there. I think that, you know, the Darwin Project was another great example where they're actually integrating streaming and interactivity into actually into the game design. And so, you know, for us, um, we, uh, I think you showed, we probably showed the most indie games we've ever had on our stage, and uh, and we treated them just like all the rest of the games, you know, and uh, so it's good to be able to see such a positive response to some really great, fun, fun titles. I got a few fan questions for you. All right. Okay. Uh, Real Taj D asks, is the marketing for Crackdown and X going to be done together as a combo or individually? So. The answer is both. So, Crackdown 3 um, is a launch title for us. Uh, so we'll come on November 7th time with the Xbox One X. We'll have a campaign for Crackdown, um, but also it will be one of the showcase titles that the team will use uh, that's marketing the Xbox One X as well. Walker Man asks, what are your plans to convey the true 4K theme? Many will, because many still don't have 4K devices, 
and or are you going to rely on places like Digital Foundry? Great question, and always good to hear from Waterman, big fan, <laughs> which is a uh, big fan of ours. So, uh, Digital Foundry is a great outlet because they really do go into the technical depths uh, that a lot of you know, core fans really want to, want to go into. Uh, that's why we gave them an under the hood look at all the technical specs uh, around Xbox One X uh, in advance of E3. Uh, and we know they'll continue to do that, we continue to do game comparisons and all that. Um, side by side, so that will happen. I think the other thing people should remember is that when a game is built in true 4K, and you don't have a 4K TV, you're actually gonna get benefits from that because of the super sampling. So they're actually gonna super sample the true 4K games for people that have HD TV. So not only will load times be better, performance be better, but you're gonna benefit from that and the power and performance. Uh, so, you know, obviously we talk about 4K and 4K TV, that's incredible, but no matter what kind of, you have HD TV or 4K TV, you're gonna get a lot of benefits from all this, all this power. Uh, Benjamin Lee asks, what do you think about innovation in gaming? And do you think it's moving fast enough to push gaming forward in the next two or three years? Well, there's so much innovation happening right now. I mean, I you know I think not just in gaming, but also like what people are doing with interactivity, with streaming. I mean, that's why I think we've been really pushing a lot of what we're doing with Mixer as an example of that. Um, how people can make it really easy for them to stream from their console. And, uh, interactivity built into the streaming. You know, games now being designed around that. Um, and so, you know, Darwin Project is a good example of that. And so, you know, I, to me. Um, I, well, that's what I love about this industry. You know, that's our art form is interactive, and so that means that uh, you don't just see and hear, but you get to experience and you get to be part of that creation process. And, and now to add streaming into that layer, I mean, it's pretty cool. So I mean, I'm excited about the innovation. Uh, also, there's a lot of technical innovation that's happening uh, with worlds and creations and visuals uh, that X is enabling. Anthem's a great example of that. Right. Um, and so on the other side there, um, you know, for me, that's going to create new worlds and things that we've never experienced before. So as a gamer, absolutely excited for that. Absolutely. Uh, Diego Hernan asks, uh, will there be any changes in marketing style so that Japanese games can be well viewed by the average Xbox player? Yeah, I know we've got a lot of fans of uh, Japanese games, and uh, I think you've seen Phil speak a lot of that to that. Um, he did, uh, and he will continue to uh, go to Japan and work with our development partners there. It was fun to be able to show things like Code Vein, Dragon Ball Z, the Fight and Fighter uh, title looks great. Um, you know, we did Phantom Dust uh, earlier so this year, bringing that back. So, again, it's about great games uh, from great creators, no matter where, no matter where they might be. And we want to be the platform that has the largest and most diverse games lineup. And I think that's what we brought to E3. Uh, so if you want variety, you want to deliver that. If you want the big blockbusters, of course, you want Halo, Gears, Forza, all the big blockbuster exclusives, we have that. Um, all the big third party titles. I mean, the thing is, if you have an Xbox One X, no matter what game, no matter what franchise you're into, um, it's going to look and play better on our box. The benefits of that power um, is pretty substantial. And so it's an exciting time, and I think it's a great time to be, to be an Xbox gamer and an Xbox fan. Right. Um, and our final fan question, Eric X, uh, when will the pre-order window be? Will it be you know, later in the summer or fall? You know, guys just want to know because they want to Of course. Out. I love it. I love it. It's, people are like, okay, I'm sold. How do I sign up? How do I? Yeah, well, what we do, you know, we unveiled the box and all that, and then this week we've been talking with our retail partners here at E3 and working out those details. So I'd say, you know, uh, once we're ready and finalize all that, uh, but, you know, we're, it's good to hear the demand. It's good to hear people are, are ready to buy, and, uh, you know, we're going to make as many as we can. Uh, we'll be sharing more of those details soon. Awesome, awesome. Um, and just to you know, wrap up, just with a few more. Obviously, customization-wise, you know, we love the customization. <laughs> we love our controllers. Yeah. Okay. How how are we looking this holiday season? Possibly, do you guys have any plans for some slick-looking crackdown consoles? Maybe something nice with uh, maybe Glory or something like that? We're not planning a lot of customizations for this, mostly because it's a new new product. Okay. Uh, we might have a small surprise in oh, the works. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> share when they're ready. Uh, you know, I think the 
the box and the design is pretty impressive to be able to make it the small, not just the most right. powerful, but the smallest, smallest box yes. ever made. Yeah. Um, so we're really proud of that. Um, but uh, but for now, we're focused on releasing the beast, and then uh, after that, we'll maybe have some more fun with, with some of those other ideas we have fans on that. Game, you guys, I heard you guys going to Gamescom. I heard you guys maybe at Tokyo Game Show. Is it possible we see more Crackdown gameplay at Gamescom? Because I know that's a Euro studio. We got everything happening in Europe. Not saying you have to tell me, sure. but will there be maybe a few surprises at Gamescom? We're definitely bringing Crackdown to Gamescom. We're going to bring all our big titles uh, uh, to Gamescom. You know, not only that, uh, you know, Germany's a huge PC market as well. Right. So we'll be bringing all that. In fact, I'm planning on going to Gamescom. Uh, so we'll be there in a big way for our fans uh, and for the media that are there uh, that come from around Europe in particular. Um, and we might have some more news in Gamescom. Okay. We might. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, again, I want to thank you, Greedy, for the opportunity. Absolutely. The chance to talk with you once again. My pleasure. Thank you guys for all, all your support and all your love of, of games and uh, of all we're doing. And we always appreciate all the feedback and the passion. Absolutely. Well, I'm Lynn from Tick Podcast. We're Bear Podcast with Xbox with my man Aaron Greenberg here representing the Xbox Podcast and Xbox community for you guys out there. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you on another episode of Tick Podcast.